studio tonight, we have a woman who is doing great work. Work that even I cannot imagine showing up for every single day. And I have a great question, <laughs> like how does she do it? But she's going to walk us through how she ended up starting an amazing organization, which I'm sure a lot of you have heard about, Usikimia meaning don't don't be shut up don't be shut out don't be shut up whichever way you want to translate it but nobody should keep you quiet over what is going on especially the injustices among men women children and everybody around jerry karibu sana to the nest thank you so much for having me it's so amazing seeing you it's incredible and a here. privilege to have you here on the nest I mean, I admire the work you do. Uh, your story is so powerful. But of course, tonight we're going to talk about your works that you know are in Usikeme, uh, your organization. Right. And uh, for now, you can introduce yourself, say hi to the people who are watching us, and right. tell them who you are. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Jerry Megwe. I am the executive director of Osikimi. Osikimi is an organization that works towards ending the prevalence of gender-based violence mm -hmm. in this country. Mm -hmm. And we do it through various programs that you see, mm -hmm. some which are visible, some which have my, my much more <laughs> invisible <laughs> yes. behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. But paramount to the work that we do is um, we respond, we support, and we protect mm. victims and survivors of gender-based violence. Yes. yes. And mm. for most of you who probably tuned in into what had been happening into this country, in the yes. beginning of the country, mm. uh, we had the march mm -hmm. that was around ending femicide yes. that happened in January. Mm. Uh, we were part of the you know the organizers that did that yes. and thank you to the nesters that showed up for this march yes. and we keep pushing again it's a privilege to hear from you and we know and we have seen the great work you're doing sometimes i see those posts and you're saying we have to go all the way to a certain village to rescue this girl to do this but there's obviously a story behind that how did you end up where you are with usikimi to be honest, mm -hmm. I did not envision this. My dream in primary school was to become a nun. I thought ah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought yes. nuns were yeah. And yeah. nuns run in my family. We have a lot. No way. And so, yes, nuns and priests and you know, people of service. Yes. So service mm -hmm. is something that mm -hmm. as a person yes. I am quite used to. Mm -hmm. And even the people who knew me growing up will tell you that in our family we are committed to service. Yes. So mm -hmm. I, I I guess it's sometimes alignment yes i love that you use the word alignment mm -hmm. it's alignment yes but mostly for me i will have to say uh what happened mm -hmm. really to mm -hmm. start mm -hmm. into this journey yes. was um i am a survivor of gender-based violence mm -hmm. myself mm -hmm. but that is not even the reason yes. why i mean i do this yes the thing is for me uh, about five no six years back mm -hmm. six, seven years back mm -hmm. right i was on my journey my own journey of healing yes. because when you survive an abusive marriage mm. and you come out of it, mm. there is a process which you go through yes. and that process is healing. Exactly. Uh, because you can live, there, there are ways in which you can live in this life, mm -hmm. right? There are ways in which you show up. Mm -hmm. You can show up angry, you can yes. show up bitter, yes. you can show up dejected. Mm -hmm. You can say, look, my life was like this mm -hmm. and now my life is over. Yes. And I mean, having been in a marriage of 15 years, mm. I met this man when mm. I was pretty, pretty oh, young. Yeah. And I was with him, I had children with mm. him, two children to mm. be exact. Mm. And I walked out of that marriage, I was mm. in my early 30s. Now I'm out of the marriage. Mm. You know, there's the idea that I left all my everything there. Yes. And for me, I felt like that wasn't it. Mm. It can be the end of living. Exactly. Because I think for most of us, when mm. we go through the tragedies of life, mm. sometimes we hold on to what was. It's true. And we're like, I'm not moving from here. Mm -hmm. But I felt like I needed to move on exactly. and create something for myself and mm. for my life. Mm. That wasn't mm. was me either. Mm. For me, it was just how do I move on from yes, this place yes. without being bitter, mm. without projecting to my children? Mm -hmm. How do I become a better mother wow. to my kids without mm. necessarily using everything that I've gone through yes. to hurt them? Yes. So um, I found a good, a great therapist, mm -hmm. and we started walking the, you know, mm -hmm. you know, walking the journey. Yes. And 
you know, uh, and releasing things that I didn't even realize I was holding yes. on to. Therapy is hard work. Mm -hmm. I, I think most people don't think that. Yep. But therapy is not just going sitting on a sofa and just talking to someone. No, therapy is actually yeah. you looking into yourself and mm -hmm. committing into yeah. working yes. and, and becoming a better version of mm -hmm. yourself mm -hmm. or even you know, there's no better version of yourself. Just yes. committing to doing better for mm. yourself. Yes. Right. So for me, that was what happened. Mm -hmm. And so I felt like after working for two years mm. and I was talking to my therapist and I was like, I want to commit to doing something better. Mm. And so we formed something called Survivors Anonymous. Yes. And Survivors Anonymous, I reached out on my Facebook page. Uh -huh. I remember the first mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And 30 women showed up. Yes. I said, I'm looking for survivors of gender-based violence. Yes. You know, in our head, when you go through something, yeah. like something that is so crucial to survive, yeah. Yeah. most of the time we think I'm the only one yep so yeah. mm -hmm. you don't think that the other people out yes, there yes. going through the yes. same so for me mm -hmm. going through uh, gender-based violence I thought mm. maybe ni mimi peke mm. so when I put up my story and I mm. told people it was mm. just a snippet yes and so many people showed up yeah hey I was mm. like, wait, wait, yes. wait, what do yes. you mean? Yes. All these women. Yep. I remember, so my, my therapist said, maybe we can do something at Allianz. Mm -hmm. And we did. Wow. Tell me why 400 women showed up. I have what? never been so shocked in my life yeah. to listen to yes. this story. Yes. And I was like, where? So there are very many, and after them, mm. you know, just speaking. Mm. So when I left outside the auditorium, so yes. many women were gathering and asking me, mm. so what do we do? And mm. I realized, well, mm. I know nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I know nothing. Mm. So mm -hmm. based on that, I mm. went to my page and I said, I would like collectively for the women that yes. came, yes. I'm just looking for 30 mm. people mm. that we can start with mm. um, a support group. Yes. So the idea was to do a support group. And we did yes. the first year mm -hmm. with my therapist. Mm -hmm. Actually, there were two therapists. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm so glad. Shout out wow. Margaret Mbuthi mm. and Grace Karaoke, doctors. Wow. Yeah. We have, you know, they supported me with that. Mm -hmm. And we did the first year. Mm -hmm. As I said, therapy yes. is hard. Yes. We started at 30. We yeah. graduated five. Wow. Because <laughs> yes. you had to show up. No, showing up. No, you have to show yes. up. If you're hurt and you're going through hurt, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's very important for you to show up yeah. for yourself. Yeah. Even not for anybody else, mm. for yourself. Mm. So. Then we did it another year. Yeah. So I met my co-founder, mm -hmm. uh, Stella. Yes. And uh, it was during the time when Dr. Ivy Wange, she had been killed in 2019, oh, yes. April of 2019. Yes, yes. And let me tell you what happened is mm -hmm. Dr. Ivy was killed. Mm -hmm. And when Dr. Ivy was killed, mm -hmm. what happened immediately mm -hmm. after mm -hmm. is the social media went wild. It's true. There were memes. Yes. You know, cut a shock memes. Yes, yes. And that is where I, I see a lot of people saying una kula fair. And oh. I'm like, do you actually realize school affair came on the death of someone? Oh, no. Because that's where the kula fair it's thing started. True. It started by saying that the girl ate the fair so she I decided to be killed. Or asked, right. as they put it. Right. Yes. And so for me, I was... I think that was the first time mm. I saw such an adverse reaction. Mm, mm. And I was like, are people serious? Yeah. Are you people like serious? Yeah. Like, yeah. this is how you're going to talk. Somebody has yep. been killed. Yeah. And not just killed, killed yeah. brutally. Yes. And you're going to make memes yep. and jokes? Yep. I was horrified, yeah. honestly. And so, obviously, me and Ella, mm. when we met and we talked about it, mm. and we were so appalled by mm. the whole of it. And mm. we're like, what if we taught people? Maybe yes. sometimes people don't have the emotional awareness, um, the situational awareness to understand that this is not what yeah. you need to be doing. Yeah. So maybe let's start this. Mm -hmm. And so we did. We mm -hmm. started We started to seek me as a page to create awareness what? on Facebook. Just to let people know, if you see somebody going through gender-based violence, yes. this is what you're supposed to do. Yes. Have empathy, yes. support, yes. show up for them, believe survivors, mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. like that. Yes. You know, and we did not think much of it. We did not think it was going to be something this yes. big. Yes. And so that's how we started. Mm. It was a page. Yes. An awareness situation. Yes. That same year, mm -hmm. we joined the march, Total mm. Shutdown mm -hmm. Kenya, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. first femicide march in oh. Kenya. Yes, yes. And um, yeah, so we were still small, mm -hmm. nothing much. Mm -hmm. you know, we were just talking to people, yes. educating. Yes. Now, let me tell you, when you educate people, mm -hmm. people are looking for solution. People are not looking for, to be told. Yes. People want solution. Yes. Because people are actually going through real mm -hmm. life situations. Yeah. And I remember the first time somebody told me, oh, my son has been raped. Oh. And I was like, eh? Mm -hmm. Wait, how old is your son? Four years. Oh, no. That was our first case. I remember it was in Kawangwari. Oh, I remember it very no. clearly. Mm -hmm. So I told her, oh, no, you know if, you know what you know that is not on the ground? Yes. You know the way we love Kenya yes. saying on yes. the ground? But so now, yes. I told her, oh, no, go to this hospital mm -hmm. and then report to the police yes. and so on and so yes. forth. So she goes to the hospital. 
No, she didn't go to the hospital. She went to the police because mm. the way the manual was yes. is you go to the yes. police, you report yes. and then you go to hospital. Yes. So she went to the police. Mm. And apparently she was dismissed. I was like, what do you mean you were dismissed? I was like, that cannot be serious. Yeah. Yeah. So I had an afternoon off. Mm. Uh, I was flexible at yes. work. Yes. And so I, I was like, let me yeah. take her. Yeah. I go see. So we mm. went. Mm -hmm. Allah. And uh, the way we were treated yeah. made me realize everything I knew you don't know i don't know mm. everything you know is yeah. book knowledge yes. you know the book knowledge yes. does not translate yes. to actual experience no, it doesn't. yeah so that's yeah. what happened yeah and so i was like where mm. so i took her i took her through i realized man there are so many hurdles that victims go through yes. that i didn't realize about yeah. Yeah. that yes this is how things are supposed mm -hmm. to work mm -hmm. but in this country that is not how it, things go they don't work and so mm. we started with one survivor here mm. when I'm not mm. available. Mm. So 2020 happened though. Mm -hmm. And when 2020 happened, that is what pushed us. Yeah. Because uh, we were still doing, you know, I'm still working, yes. doing musikimi yeah. as a part-time yeah. thing, nothing yeah. serious, mm -hmm. still talking to people, mm -hmm. telling mm -hmm. them this is what you need to do, mm -hmm. giving people advice. The first thing that happened when 2020, when COVID happened, mm. our first case was a woman who was thrown over a balcony oh, no. by her husband. And now people are calling us. Mm. And I was like, excuse me, what? So are you serious? Yeah. So me in my car. Yes. Nothing serious. It's oh, just one woman. Yeah. Me in my car, went there, got the woman, mm. took her to hospital. Mm. Hiya. Where do I take her? Remember Nairobi is closed. Yeah. She can't go back to her parents. Yeah. She can't go back to her husband. Yeah. So I'm asking people, see me, I know what the things yeah. I've read. Yes, yes. Uh, where are safe houses? Yeah, and yeah. Everybody's asking me what are what those? Is those? What is that? And I'm like, I, yeah. what? Yeah. We, if there are children homes, I'm yeah. like, I'm not looking for a children home. Yeah. I have a woman. Yes. She's been injured. Yes. She's in my car. Yeah. I need to take her somewhere. Yeah. And people are like, we've never heard of safe houses. Wow. So what do I do? Yeah. I take her to my house. I take this woman to my house. That was woman one. Hmm. Within that same week, yeah. I had five women living in my house. Oh, my and goodness. their children. Oh, because no. there are no safe houses. The yes. only safe house I could establish yes. was one for refugee girls, mm. all below 17. Yes. You have five women living yeah. in your house now. Home is no longer a sanctuary. Yeah. So me and mm. Ella, we met and we discussed and mm. we were like, we need to do something. Yeah. We don't know how to run a safe mm -hmm. house, mm -hmm. but I think we have to open one. Yes. Do we have money? No. no. So I'm like, do you have money? No. How much do we have between us? 20,000. Yeah. Let's go look for a house. So we go oh. to, you know, some place um, in the outskirts of Kambu mm. and we look for a house. Mm. We don't look for a house. We look yes. for a plot. Yes. So because, yes. you know, I s at this point mm -hmm. in time, mm -hmm. I have five women living in my house, yeah. three in Ella's, what? and a couple of others in my friends' houses. And the children. where would I take them? Yes. Right? Oh, ha. my. So we go, we get three rooms. Mm. I write on Facebook, I tell people, listen, I'm opening a safe house. I need furniture. Yes. What do you have? Yes. Let me tell you, the Kenyan public showed up for mm. me. And mm. I am still in awe of how yeah. people showed up. Yeah. Because people showed up in kind. Mm -hmm. People showed up, gave us, you know, shopping for food. Yes. Furniture. And in, in a few days we had set up a proper house mm. had a sitting room a small kitchen right. and bedrooms with double decker beds and we were like this is how a safe house looks like we had no clue how to run oh it but we were just running on faith yes <laughs> yes yeah running on faith and yes. so that's how we opened the safe house mm -hmm. and currently we run two safe houses mm -hmm. different from that obviously yes. now we are very cognizant of yes. what we're doing yes. pushing yes. for a safe house act yes. Yes. so that the act is anchored in yes. law because it is not anchored uh, in law absolutely. uh it's very important because I have been arrested a couple of times. Uh, because you see, if yeah. something is not anchored in yes, law, yes. then the police can look at it as a loophole. It's true. Remember the it's first true. time I was arrested in mm -hmm. 2021, mm -hmm. the police came. Mm -hmm. So this man was looking for his wife. By the way, this is why you can never tell where the safe oh, houses are. Yes. It's yes. confidential. Yes. And I always tell people, why do you want to come to a safe house? Yeah. Come to a safe house and you find your sister. You yes. know that. Yes. I promise you'll go yes. tell your brother. Yes. And that's how you put the survivors Very true. in jeopardy. Yes. And so this man, mm -hmm. he was able to trace where his oh wife had no. gone. And so he came, they came with the police. Five cars, my friend, oh. they came to the safe house. They looked for her for whatever reason. Oh. At that point, I didn't put that woman in that yes. safe house. Yes, she passed by there, yes. but we didn't put her there. Because yes. I listened to her story. Yes. And she came with an Uber. They even mm. went and got the Uber driver that mm. drove her there. Mm. Arrested him. The Uber driver brought them all the way to the safe house. No. And so they were, you know, they were they, I remember them, they were bullying the women and they were telling them, mm. uh -huh. mm. And so I was arrested, I was in a wedding. 
my friend's wedding. Mm. This policeman called me and told me, we know where you are. Mm -hmm. And we are coming to arrest you to the Mamina wedding. Mm. I was in Pride in Westlands. Yes. Kindly. Yeah. Do not come to the wedding. Yeah. Because nobody's wedding should be undone no. because of something exactly. that I have done. Yeah. And so I will come downstairs, you arrest me. Yeah. And uh, by the time they came, I just wrote on Facebook and I told people, hey, mm. I am being arrested. I don't know why I'm being arrested, but I'm being arrested mm. and I'm being taken to mm. XYZ police station. Mm. And so I said, mm -hmm. and so that's, that was my first arrest for the course of the work. <laughs> I was like, this is not what I anticipate. Yes. <laughs> So yeah. I was arrested, but yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yes, and, and you know, that brings me to now the question, like, how do you keep going? Because I know anytime I am in service or I do something and I feel like people are getting too close, I tend to shrink back. Right. Probably I don't have that. I worry, like, oh, if I'll show up fully and completely. And here is Njeri. Uh, pris prisons and jails are not funny, by no, the way. No, 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 my friend. Yes. <laughs> They're not no. funny. Oh my God. I went to that. I remember going sitting in that place. Yes. In that cell. Yes. Yeah, it's a cell. Yeah. And I'm asking, then I'm sitting and I'm, now you're sitting and it's dark. Yes. Right? And yeah. um, there's one cabal over there. Yeah. And I realized we're supposed to, <laughs> in a bucket. Ah. Uh -huh. And I was like, we're in the same room with Yeah. Our yeah. Yeah, that was yes. for me. That was yes. even the much more yes. shock. I thought we had developed to a place where, and this is a big police station. Yeah, I was so horrified. I think that yeah. horrified me more yeah. than, it, than yeah. even being arrested. Yeah, and then people are there like, eh. and then I cried. Oh. Now I've been arrested so many times. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> you used Nowadays to. Nowadays I just match. <laughs> like I bring them. I bring myself. <laughs> I'll bring myself. In yes. fact, I tell them, sit over here too. This yes. it's not constitutional. Oh, please yes. don't do those things. Yes. Me, I'm a human rights yes. defender. I know my way. Yes. Uh, you, 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 you remove your shoe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me, I'm like story. Senior pa. Shikasimo. Right. Ah. Good. And yeah. 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 That time I was new. Yes. Now I cried, oh, my friend. No. I tell you, even I was, I, I think I came out at around five in the morning. Mm. I was like, oh, you know yeah. that you've cried yeah. until yeah. if people ask me, what yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it was really funny. But yeah, that was my first episode with police. After yeah. that, I've been arrested for marching yes. for a dead child. Yes. I've been arrested for, oh. you know, demonstrating. I've been mm. arrested for running the civil. I've been, mm. you know, yes. now, I'm just arrested occasionally. It's, mm. it's been a year. It's been a f <laughs> solid <laughs> last year. I wasn't well. arrested. <laughs> I hope this is not the year I get arrested no, either. I, it won't happen. And, and I can see that transition. Maybe from an insider's, and when, when I use the word uh, insider, I mean you see it all from the very beginning. Uh, can you paint for us if there's been any improvement, especially now in Kenya, that we are very... <laughs> and I can tell from your face, like, uh -huh. uh, could you paint for us that picture? I feel like... When I started this work, mm -hmm. I didn't know what I was getting yes, into. Yes, yes. And uh, right now, mm -hmm. I feel like I have seen the worst that yes. human beings can do to mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. And by the worst, I mean the absolute yeah. worst. Yeah. And I don't want to say it's getting better. It's not. Mm -hmm. That's a lie. Yeah. Because what I knew mm -hmm. five years ago when yep. we were starting, yeah. and the things I have seen just this year, yeah. Uh, especially it takes this year, a lot of faith. Yeah, to believe, to even wake up. Yeah, the days when I don't want to talk to people, wow. I absolutely don't want to talk to anyone because mm. Mm. sometimes I don't think people understand yeah. what it is to what see the yeah. kind of violence mm. I see, mm. the kind of gore I see, the yeah. kind of blood. Yeah, I, 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 I let me just paint a picture. Mm. Mm. A four-day-older child died in my arms because this child was defiled by her uncle. Oh, my God. Uh, I need people to understand that it changes who you are and how you view humanity. Wow. Because that's a baby. A four-day-old. Four I don't understand how. I, I don't get it. Oh, my God. And that's why I don't argue with people. Mm. I'm in a space where I no longer argue with yes, people. Yes. If you don't believe these things happen, mm. I'm so happy for you. Yeah. Man, good for you. Good for you. Yeah. I, I don't. Mm. Because I have seen mm. the worst that you can do to people. Mm. I have seen people do things that I don't even talk in public. 
I definitely have somebody I yes. debrief to mm. just about the cases. Yes. Because otherwise then it becomes trauma dumping. No, it yeah. I become so distant yeah. from my people, yes. from my friends, yes. from my family. Because mm -hmm. I stopped seeing people as people. Mm. There's a place in my life where I was not seeing people for mm. who they are. Mm. I didn't even know how to relate. Oh and I think no. my friends called me for a meeting and they were like, listen, mm -hmm. it's either you shut down this Usikimia yeah. and you go back to being like a real yes. person. Yes. You need to relate to us. Yeah. You don't. Yeah. It's like yeah. you've distanced yourself yeah. from yeah. us. Yeah. And it was a meeting because mm -hmm. I couldn't. Yes. I, I had to hold myself back because I was looking at people like, uh, are you yeah. people? Mm -hmm. So when people ask me, how do you? Yeah. It's because... I had people call me out and I had yeah. to work on it yeah. to effectively even mm -hmm. communicate mm -hmm. to people mm -hmm. because there is a way you start looking at people yeah. and you see them for bad people. Yeah. When when you go and find, nobody told me mm. that at some point mm -hmm. I'll be walking in mortuaries yeah. and doing post mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Those are things that people don't yeah. think affect you. Yes. They do. Yes. They affect your outlook mm -hmm. on life. Mm -hmm. I, and um, I think I used to, I lost my joy. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, I'm I'm generally a happy person. Mm. So one of the things I lost mm. was my joy. Yeah, I lost my happiness. Mm. I lost who I was. Mm. Um, I make jokes. Yeah, I laugh. I became dark. Yeah, because that's all I could see. Yeah. I couldn't see a light at the yeah. end of the tunnel. Yeah. yeah, and for some time I had to remove myself from the situation mm. and just you know do a lot of yes. therapy. Yes, a lot of self care. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, just to get even the love. Yes, because there's a hopelessness. Yeah. that comes with the work because mm. every time first mm. of all we have an in a corrupt yes. system, system that doesn't really help mm. let me let me let me let me let me give you an mm. idea mm. in mm. every hundred cases maybe two go to court no and we get about 30 cases every mm. week mm. so that tells you the number of cases we oh, get no. and if only two are going to court do you know how yeah. helpless you feel yeah. you're pushing and you're yeah. pushing and nothing is, nothing happening. is happening so there's that thing mm. the idea that Mm. nothing changes oh. and the hopelessness and the apathy that comes with that mm. but yes again yeah i had to look for the purpose mm -hmm. what is the purpose yes the why the why yes and sometimes the why mm. is in the feeding program mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. feed 800 children mm -hmm. to a thousand children yes tuesday wednesday thursday friday mm. And that's the why. Mm. Because by feeding these children, I'm yes. ensuring they're not predated exactly. upon. They are happy. Yes. You know, they, they, they see the food and yeah. that's the why. And that's the why. And sometimes that's enough. Yes. You know, I'm, I'm looking at baby W. Mm. Wilson. Let me just call him by his name. Yes. A child that had been dumped in Vihiga, mm. left to die because yeah. he had hydrocephalus. And I traveled all the way to Vihiga. Oh, no. I was told by the doctor mm. if I was... One day late, that boy would have been dead. Because exactly. he had been left outside to die. Oh, no. Yeah? Now, mm. he's four years. Mm. He joined school this year. Oh. And he still has a drug yes, yes. And his head is still heavy yes, and big. Yes. But he's going to school. Oh, my goodness. And when you ask me why, yes. Wilson is the why. That's why. And I have so many whys. When, yes. I, when I'm so, dis you know, mm. I, I'm, I feel like, mm. I, why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. And I remember Wilson, I'm like, yes. that's the why. That's the why. He's alive because somebody yes, yes. interfered. And so mm. for me, it's mm. always one person yes. at a time. Yes. I tell people, don't look for them much. Mm. But sometimes I feel like, yeah, we want to it's a lot. grab everything. You can't. Yes. Just one person. Just one That you person. can change. Mm. That's it. That's it. That's enough. So <sighs> if we can get one case to court, yes. I'm happy. Uh, yes. If we can get one person to court, mm -hmm. uh, we can save one woman. Mm. That's enough. One child. Yes. One man. Yeah. One person at amazing. a time. Amazing. That's amazing. good enough for me. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, it's just amazing how, you know, everything is flowing as I imagined it in my head. <laughs> Because I have so many questions at the same time. Of course, I have to pay attention to the fact that you're still a human being. <laughs> you have, I am. yeah, because sometimes even just hearing the story, it affects you so bad. I can only imagine you down there. And I've seen some gory, horrible, horrible stories and injustice. But we're going to take a breather. And when we come back, we're going to talk about now the actual work like now the feeding program, the rescue, just break, uh, break everything down for us so that, yeah. you know, even for people who are willing to reach out, even virtually, Amazing. they can do it. That's okay. Great. Ah, we are with uh, Jerry Migwe, a wonderful woman doing wonderful work. I'm telling you, like I said at the beginning, there's a big hut and then there's Jerry. 
Stay with us as we continue with this story on how Usikimi has been bringing change where we are as a country and probably also take a look at what we would wish for in the near or far future. Don't go anywhere.